Yes, uh, hello everyone and uh, thanks Martin for your introduction. So alive from our beautiful Dutch country, I will give a short introduction how to use the database of nematodes and pathogens. Um, by using a practical example, I will show you how I use this database in my own work and uh, also how you can use it. Through this link, uh, bestforsoil.eu, um, you can access the database for nematodes and pathogens. Here, all steps for working with the databases are clearly explained. Um, different languages can be selected. In total, uh, there are 22 languages. And by using the buttons at the, the foot of the page, you can choose the database for pathogens or the database for nematodes. I use this database quite often in my own work because the soil in my region has many problems with nematodes. So a correct uh, crop rotation and choice of green manure crops is therefore um, extra important. And the database is a great tool for this. Um, these pictures show, show some examples of some problems in the field at a customer of mine. So we often see trailing spots, as you can see in this picture, in onions and also trailing spots in uh, potatoes. And we also see problems with rhizoctonia during the emerging of the potatoes, as you can see in this picture. And um, also the last few years, uh, potatoes are increasingly dying off earlier due to um, sclerotinia and sclerotoria, as you can see in this picture. Uh, the, the following crops are cultivated um, in rotation by the grower. There are starch potatoes followed by sugar beets, then starch potatoes again, then spring barley fo uh, followed by fodder rape, then starch potatoes, and then onions followed by fodder rape. So due to the underdeveloped areas on many fields, I advise the grower to take a free living uh, nematode samples um, to obtain insight into the different types of nematodes and their counts. So here you can see the different types of nematodes and here you can see um, their counts. And uh, as you can see, um, for a few uh, types of, of few types of nematodes, nothing was found in the sample. Uh, but this does apply to, to some root um, lesion nematodes, as you can see over here. For both uh, Pratilengus granatus, Pratilengus neglectus, and Pratilengus penetrans, um, higher numbers were found. Then together with the grower, um, we filled in the database for nematodes. Um, here you can fill in the country and the soil type, and you can uh, fill in, in uh, a field name, for example. Uh, then you can select on the left side uh, the crops and green manure crops. Uh, the tool includes uh, 70 crops, including uh, green manure crops, and about uh, 30 different types of nematodes. Um, I have selected the particular crops in the rotation and a number of extra crops to include into the scheme. Then on the right side, um, the type of nematodes can be selected. And in this example, I also selected some extra types of nematodes. Then you can click on create scheme to display the scheme with the data you selected. In this scheme, um, we see the selected crops and uh, green menu crops on the left side and the selected nematodes above. Um, the legenda explains uh, the used colors and symbols. And the color green means a little damage to the crop and a purple color means uh, a lot of damage to the crop. A dash or a small uh, dot indicates the degree of multiplication of a certain nematode on a concerning crop. So three dots means a strong multiplication and a dash means a um, double dash means an active uh, population decline. So this scheme shows the selected crops which the grower has in his rotation. You can see the barley, potato, sugar beet, onion, and the fodder rape. And also shown are the selected nemat uh, nematodes of which higher numbers um, were found in the nematode sample. Here you can see granatus, neglectus, and penetrans. So as you can see, Pratrilengus granatus um, does not cause much damage in these crops. There is no orange or purple color um, at the spe uh, specific um, crops. And we don't know much about the effect of neglectus, as you can see on the white color. 
And as you can see, the Prathilanthus penetrans causes a lot of damage in potatoes, orange color, and in onions, the purple color. So a lot of crops, not only in this rotation, are strongly multiply uh, this type, the penetrans type of uh, nematodes. This also applies to the green menu crops, as you can see over here. In this rotation, sugar beet um, is grown after potatoes, and potatoes strongly reproduce um, Prathilanthus penetrans. However, sugar beet uh, does not suffer from this damage, as you can see at the, at the green color, and does not reproduce this type of nematodes uh, strongly either. However, um, damage may occur in potatoes after the sugar beet. And then barley. Barley is not affected by penetrance either. But the fodder rape after barley, as you can see over here, um, causes a strong multiplication of penetrance. And this can cause a lot of damage in the next two years in the potatoes and the onions, which are grown after the fodder rape. So this scheme shows the effect of a particular crop rotation on the multiplication of nematodes. So for this grower, um, other crops in the rotation that multiply penetrance less as potatoes or onions would be a good solution. But the farmer does not accept this solution because of financial reasons um, and the opportunity to tackle the problem in uh, partly in a different way. And there are also not many crops left for that region that can tackle the problem with penetrance. So in this case, um, fodder rape is a bad choice as a green menu crop. This uh, green menu crop multiplies um, penetrance strongly. And to grow, for example, black oats, as you can see over here, or uh, marigolds, uh, as green menu crop would be a better choice in this rotation. These uh, green menu crop find a reduction of um, this nematode for, of the penetrance. Um, when you click on a particular box in the scheme, for example, um, the penetrance in potato, you will get extra information about the nematode in a particular crop. So here you can see an example of uh, information you will see by clicking on penetrance in potatoes. So we also saw um, damage from some soil-borne uh, fun fungi, uh, the Rizitonia and the Sclerotinia. And these fungi can be entered into the pathogens database. The tool contains about uh, 140 pathogens. Uh, again, I have selected uh, the field crops and the, the green menu crops and some extra pathogens as examples. So the result is the, this scheme. Uh, at the top are the selected pathogens and on the left side, again, the uh, chosen uh, crops. Uh, the legenda it works in the same way as uh, with the nematode uh, scheme. So I have uh, selected the crops in the rotation and the soil-borne fungi that causes damage uh, in this rotation, the Rositonia solani and the Sclerotinia sclerotorium. Here you can see that uh, Rositonia solani uh, causes a lot of damage only in potatoes. And potatoes is also the only crop that causes multiplication in this uh, rotation. So there is not much to do about this in a crop rotation. Uh, damage of sclerotinia sclerotorium um, occurs mainly in potatoes, as you can see over here, and in onions. Here you can see the fodder rape. It's um, one of the few crops that causes a strong multiplication of sclerotinia sclerotorium. And this does not apply to black oats or marigolds. For these soil-borne fungi, so the Rizitonia and Sclerotinia, um, black oats or marigold are also a better choice as a green menu crop. So at this farm, it would be a good solution to grow crops that multiply and paint a translessus, for example, uh, potatoes. But there are not many opportunities in that region to grow other crops that can compete financially with potatoes and onions. So, as I, as I said, the farmer doesn't want any other crops in his rotation and therefore he accepts a slightly lower yields. But fodder rape as a green menu crop uh, causes strong multiplication of the harmful nematodes and pathogens. So I, I advise the grower to replace fodder rape with black oats. 
And in addition, on a number of fields with high numbers of uh, pinotrons, uh, the grower is now producing uh, winter barley instead of spring barley, and then followed by marigolds. And I must say, the problems in his crops uh, on, on the many fields have diminished considerably uh, since then. So the database on the Best for Soil website uh, is a useful tool for me as a consultant, but also for growers to keep the soil healthy um, in an organic way. So thanks for your attention. And I will say, um, take a look at the databases. And, um, and raise your questions in the F and A chat, please. Uh, thank you, Erin, um, for the talk. And we have already one uh, question. Um, what is the situation in European countries concerning sampling and testing soil for pathogens and nematodes? Do farmers consultants have easily access to laboratories? Yes, good question. Um, so for the nematode samples, there are many ways um, in the Netherlands uh, for testing, for, for do, to do samples. But for um, like the soil borne fungi, it's a bit, a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, another question by Anya is, what is your experience in using predatory nematodes or nematode trapping fungi to tackle root feeding nematodes? I, I'm reading the question. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't have uh, much experience with the predatory nematodes. We uh, we use a lot like uh, uh, nematurin and fide that are a chemical uh, uh, ways to to reduce uh, the nematodes. Mm -hmm. And we've got a very uh, special question. Um, uh, Soraya, she's asking um, that you said that the potatoes had problems with um, um, Resuctonia solani HE22, but the results of the database indicated that this HE does not affect the potato. Can you give no, some uh, on that? Uh, in in the, the, the database, it was uh, Resuctonia solani EG3. I had it in my presentation, so it was EG3 that causes a lot of damage in the potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so far, um, all the questions are answered so far. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you have uh, two very important things you want to share with the audience or two take home messages? Um, I yeah. think um, it, it is very important uh, in the future to, to um, to tackle uh, many problems um, on an arable farm in an organic way. And I think uh, the database is a great tool for this, um, to, to, to do this, uh, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We got another question, actually, by Vitalia. Um, can you clarify the process from a farmer's point of view? Does a farmer first get the soil test for the nematodes and then use the database to choose the right crop rotation? Yes, yes. A farmer does uh, first uh, get a soil test, uh, so he can see what type of nematodes and the counts uh, he has in the, in the soil, and then he can use the database to um, yeah, to, to look of what uh, what is the best way to um, to work with that. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. If there are no other questions, then I would say that we already go to break.